Bar for Bar Album Reviews, Aesop Rock, Spirit World Field Guide. Spirit World Field Guide is the eighth studio album from one of hip-hop's most cryptic and dense rappers, Aesop Rock. As the title of the album suggests, this is meant to be a field guide of sorts for the listener to use while traversing the spirit world. This project follows his last solo album, The Impossible Kid, which dropped in 2016, and it may have been one of Ace's more accessible projects. And it also follows up his collaborative album with Tobacco, Malibu Ken, which dropped last year. Given the complexity of the album's two singles, The Gates and Pizza Alley, it's, it's safe to assume that this is going to be more of a Skeleton or Bazooka Kid route rather than Impossible Kid or None Shall Pass. This project comes in at a total runtime of an hour and three minutes with 21 tracks, so it's a bit longer than some of his more recent projects. Uh, Ace can also tend to turn away new listeners with his complexity, so having 20 tracks of straight rap rap can be a little overwhelming. I think he actually acknowledges this on the intro by saying you can skip to the tracks that are pertinent to your personal spirit world experience, but I think that's more for the narrative aspect of it. Speaking of the intro, Hello from the Spirit World has Ace running through what this field guide is for. Here Ace is speaking from the spirit world, I guess as an inhabitant now. He says here that his intention is to create a guide for whoever finds themselves in the spirit world. And, you know, this really just feels like it's being read as an introduction to an actual book with the mention of the listener slash reader skipping to whatever section most directly applies to their impending scenario. But it's best to go through all of it to get a better grasp of what's going on in the spirit world as a whole. In general, though, this is a really good intro to the album and it sets the tone pretty well for what we're to expect. The first song on this album is The Gates. This is a great starting point because it has Ace literally at the gates of the spirit world. Um, I did a proper breakdown for that track about two months ago when it came out, but the gist of it is basically that this is his interpretation or description of what he saw as he approached the gates to the spirit world. Also check out the breakdown if you wanted to get a better idea of what the song's about. The next track is Button Masher. This track, as Ace explained to Flood Magazine, is about building a cardboard spaceship in your living room. This is fun because the imagery used here could be seen as him just tripping or using his imagination to the fullest extent. It could also just be him seen as him losing his mind, which is more easily seen with the last lines of the first verse. I use a phony voice while I'm yelling, nobody's home. I'm a lighter, but I wouldn't say I'm wrong. This really just makes it seem like he's not mentally home. He's physically there, but something still feels amiss. It could likely just be that his imagination or the trip is just kind of running wild, making him feel as though he isn't actually home. The beat also does a good job of adding to the spaceship vibes with what almost sounds like lasers being fired off. So that's fun. The chorus is another interesting thing to point out. He's fully taking the role of the spaceman who hasn't seen land in a minute and is possibly lost in space with the lines Pain transmission after nothing for the summer, I have never seen so many colors. Space is vast, and we really have no idea what's out there, so he could very well just be seeing a bunch of colors while lost in it. Or he could just be tripping in his living room playing in a box. There's also a beat switch, which is actually something that he does pretty frequently on this project, but is done well and usually only for the final verses, and as it is here. It's done well here because of what he starts off the third verse with. It's basically just a reflection of how disconnected he feels from the normal people. Normal people. He's reporting in from his own orbit, to say it gently. There's no one else out there with him, just him on his own. Dog at the Door is a pretty straightforward track about your dog barking at something that might be outside. The song is set on a windy night where there's already a bunch of noises, so having the dog barking at the door just kind of adds to that spooky feel. You go outside to check out what it is, but you don't see anything. It's, it's probably a trap. The noise could really just be anything ranging from a squirrel to a guy with an axe trying to kill you, but it's probably a trap. The song plays well into Ace's paranoia, which we've seen in the past as well. Also the fact that his persona is that of a loner, it's not hard to imagine him somewhere in a cabin just peeking out to see what the dog was barking at, because it's probably a trap. The sounds could also just be inhabitants of the spirit world trying to commu communicate with him but it's also probably just a trap. 
Gauze is a track about being prepared for the spirit world. In this song, Ace mentions all of the supplies that he's brought with him to the spirit world, including gauze, knives, flares, and really just a bunch of other things. All these things are to make sure that you're ready for any sort of possible outcome. This track is meant to be sort of like a reminder for the listener that when you go to the spirit world, you have to be prepared for anything. Kind of like if you were to go camping. The second verse is interesting because along with the slight beat switch, it sounds like he's talking to the inhabitants of the spirit world that he's happened to come across. The first being Greybeard, who seems to be someone who's just been here for a long time. Uh, he then also meets Sultan of Simple Fair, who could be just someone selling wares or food, or it could be Greybeard, that, and he's just, you know, talking to him again. Next, we have the second single for the album, Pizza Alley, which is about Ace kind of recalling a trip to Peru that he took a few years ago. And apparently this was also the first song that was written for the album. The trip apparently reinvigorated him spiritually, so creating a spirit world field guide made sense. I also did a full breakdown of this, so if you want a full analysis of it, go check that out. But the gist of it is just all the stuff they did on in Peru and what he saw while he was there. Crystal Sword is a shorter track with a weird ass beat, but I like it. This song touches on a lot of these ideas that people have of Ace, including some of his own with the lines, I'm everything from he's a pest to he's been dead for 20 years. He's been shredding perfect curbs and golden light with total scum. Pigeons bring him donuts, I'm the motherfucking chosen one. It's just kind of funny here because he's acknowledging a lot of the things that people would say about him while putting him putting his own spin on it by saying how great he is. And this is kind of a rare look how dope I am from Mace because he's usually pretty hard on himself. This also recounts a little bit of his travels through the spirit world where he says, I started spilling all my problems to the final boss. He shed a tear and let me buy like what's mine is yours. The beat in general is just wild, and I think it adds to the complexity of the spirit world. After Crystal Sword, we have Boot Soup. This song, according to Ace, talks about how the people around you can have an influence on your experience in the spirit world. Each of the three verses takes us through differing experiences that people may have while going through the spirit world. Uh, the first sounds like it's a person who just thinks that they're the shit and can take on anything, but eventually all the stuff in the spirit world comes to get him, and he ties a noose. The second is about someone who feels that they've been trapped inside their own house their whole lives, and they have to pretend to be normal. This person's experience is different because they're finally out of the situation that they're in and are experiencing some sort of freedom now. And the third is talking about someone who seems to be missing body parts and has been sewn back together. I can't exactly tell where they were before this, but it sounds like they were making bone soup out of their own bones. It's kind of weird, but it also sounds like this is the most welcoming experience at the same time, since it's a warm area and the TV's on. With coveralls, Ace is trying to talk to us about moving quietly and blending in. Like, real G is moving in silence, like lasagna. He doesn't exactly say this in the song, but it's more that it's implied. He has all these awkward and strange interactions with people in his real life, and the thought here is that maybe don't put everything you do out there because people will interpret and respond differently than you may expect. For example, the first verse, he's bringing up how conversations with his family are just now awkward hellos, and how most of his visitors request that he be tied to a chair. He also brings up at the end of the track, I know you're expecting just a Jekyll, in reference to what people's assumption of him may be, at least people that don't know him and how he works. I imagine many people just assume that he's a regular dude like Dr. Jekyll, but in reality he may be more Mr. Hyde. Jumping Coffin is a track about spirits and beings from the other side trying to communicate with you. At first I thought this track could be about zombies and how they're banging at your door trying to get in. However, that doesn't really play as well into the spirit world as spirits trying to communicate does. <laughs> Ace is basically telling you that just let the spirits in and talk to them, don't ignore them. He could also be alluding to a trip where you're trying to maintain some idea of normalcy, but that could cause the trip to go bad. I think, I think people typically recommend just letting it happen and letting it take over you, but I don't know enough about psychedelics to say. At the halfway point, we have Holy Waterfall, which is a recollection of Ace's trip to Cambodia, which could have been another spiritual journey in itself. The song itself is really memorable to me, 
probably because of the beat and the rhyme pattern that Ace uses throughout the entirety of this track. It's a fun track that doesn't do too much to further the spirit world aspect of the album, but more so the field guide part. He's basically telling you all these things that he's experienced in Cambodia. It very well could be a spiritual experience for you if you, like Ace, do drugs at the ruins and speak to doves, though. Flies is the shortest song on this project at 48 seconds. Apparently Ace wanted to do more of these shorter songs because that's there's not always a need to go for two to three verses for a particular topic. And this song is literally about flies in his home. He has no idea how they got there, but they're there now. <laughs> this could have also been seen as a nod to the spirit world where this is one of his potential hells that await him. Salt is a different feeling song than what we've heard so far on this album. Ace himself describes it as a moody temper tantrum that comes out of the feeling of being misunderstood by the people around you. The title of the song makes sense because he's just salty about being misunderstood. The feeling of being misunderstood, for Ace at least, is seen when he hears stuff like, it's not you, it's me, or when people around him just keep asking why in like the most bored tone. After hearing all of these people just kind of disregard what you have to say and what you do, and going to the spirit world might not be the worst idea. This is also where the salt comes into play because he created a circle of salt to either keep himself safe from the people around him or to kind of create a portal to the spirit world. I don't remember how alchemy or magic works. <laughs> we get to hear about one of Ace's other trips with the track Sleeper Car. This time it's about a trip that he took to Thailand, with the title referring to an overnight train ride he took. This again almost feels like he's in his own personal hell because even though he's in the sleeper car, he just can't fall asleep. The sounds and everything that he's been doing keeps him awake. The chorus says, I might never make it out. If I ever make it out, send me back in. Got lost, got found. Got a feeling I should lose it all again. Which makes it sound like he's in the spirit world here and he can't get out. However, if he does get out, he wants to return so that he can, I, I'm assuming, to fully experience everything because he feels like he should just lose it all again. There's another potential reference to spirit world with the lines, okay, my homie said, I just got blessed by a monk. I said, I got no frame of reference. God is dead where I'm from. Still, I've been doing what I can to get these devil expunged. Here it sounds like his friend is fully enjoying whatever he feels like is his spiritual journey, whereas Ace is just kind of here for the ride since he already has his own thoughts. He's been trying to remove these devils, which could be literal devils in the spirit world, or just his own personal devils slash demons that are haunting him. I really do enjoy the tracks where he talks about his travels because it puts those places and experiences into a different light than what most people would think of. Next up, we have another one of those short songs that Ace wanted to do with 1 to 10. And this song is just about him dealing with back pain. It's funny because this is something that most people have to deal with as they get older, but no one ever really just talks about it like this. I relate to the track because I've begun to have more back pain in general as I'm getting older, as well as just having to deal with uh, sciatica pain on and off for like 20 years. Just like Ace, I'm usually okay to simply shut up and cope, but these days, more than ever, my back is like, nope. Attaboy is an interesting track because there's just one long verse where Ace is talking about how some of the spirits in the spirit world are unfriendly and they're trying to get rid of you while on your adventure. Um, and that makes all the random violence make a bit more sense on this track. He has pianos falling on him and he's being eaten by Venus flytraps, had a fireball thrown at him, but he's still there in the spirit world saying, fuck y'all. Although these things are trying to get rid of him, he's still remaining in his energy field for protection, eating machapaki. Uh, next up we have kodokushi. Kodokushi is the term referring to the Japanese phenomena of people dying alone in their homes and their bodies not being found for quite some time. Ace says that this is about the lonely side of the spirit world and knowing that you're only here because you don't belong anywhere else. It's really sad actually. Imagine all the spirits that died alone or have no other place to congregate, just congregate here and kind of sigh in unison. <laughs> this song is really dope though with the instrumentals supplemented by scratches from DJ Zone as well as Ace's flow on the track. 
It is interesting though, because even though this is the lonely side of the spirit world, it sounds like there's still a lot of spirits around. I guess that makes sense with the second verse making note of territorial organisms. I can definitely see how loners would be more territorial and not really want others to encroach on their space. This kind of ties into Attaboy too, with a level of with the level of territorialism giving them a cool burgundy in both tooth and claw. These are spirits that have no problem fighting until they have blood on their hands and their teeth, similar to the ones trying to attack in Attaboy. Fixed and dilated is about the evils of the spirit world. The first verse has a seemingly making a deal with a shaman of sorts to leave with a soul. However, he did mention that this is about demonic possession and the feeling that your flesh might be just a vehicle for dark forces. With that in mind, the first verse where he says, I'm all animalia stitched together by a severed hand, could be him talking about how dark forces are throwing all aspects of life into him, kind of like a delivery or a Trojan horse of sorts. These thoughts continue in the second verse where it's less about the acts that they're actively doing, but more of what they're capable of. It's also amusing to see that he acknowledges that most people probably just think he's crazy and, you know, just draw the line at the Easter Bunny. Sidequest is the last short song on this project, and it's just him talking about skateboarding at night in autumn. This track is weird because of the rhyme pattern. It feels like a long run on sentence. I mean, it has a weird time signature, so it makes sense. So the time signature on this is six fourths instead of the typical four fourths. It also just kind of feels like an interlude sort of track, just like the other uh, short tracks have been. One of the last tracks on the project is Marble Cake. This track is really the last track because it's more of a wrap up sort of thing, but it's meant to be about how the journey to your goal is the real prize, not the actual end of the goal. This is actually a cool way to start wrapping up the project because if this was meant to be a field guide, this would be one of those bullet points that you'd see at the beginning, like rules for the field, uh, spirit world saying, you know, just make sure you have fun and the, the real prize is the adventure and the friends you made along the way. This brings us to the final track, The Four Winds. And this song is about just always moving forward and to keep going. This applies to the spirit world because as you traverse it, there's a lot of things that may try to stop you or kill you, but as long as you keep pushing, you'll be fine. That, that's really all it is, just keep pushing and whether that be in spirit world or in real life. Overall, this was a really solid project. As with every Aesop Rock project, there's still a lot to dissect and fully analyze. But hopefully this review helps to give you a starting point for those of you guys who actually want to look into lyrics and try to understand everything that he's saying here. Alternatively, if there's any interest in me doing a breakdown for the rest of the tracks like I did for The Gates and Pete's Alley, let me know in the comments below. I'm totally down for that. My favorite tracks for now are Button Masher, Dog at the Door, Holy Waterfall, 1 to 10, and Marble Cake. I look forward to further understanding Ace's mind with future listens of this project, but hopefully I'm able to fully understand it before his next album comes out, whenever that is. And that's all I got. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this album, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, what your favorite tracks are, and like and subscribe if you want to see more reviews and content like this. Also, sound off in the comments if you want me to do more breakdowns for this album specifically. That's all I got. Thank you for watching, and please stay safe out there.